Hello, uh, my name is Burt Busher. I'm the Director of Visual Arts at the Independence Community College. Uh, this is my first year here teaching in Independence and uh, I've been networking and, and gotten to know some wonderful people here at the IMAC. Uh, and they invited me to uh, judge the Young Artists Exhibit this year, uh, which features a lot of Southeast Kansas schools uh, and young artists. Uh, it was a wonderful experience judging this show. Uh, I had a, a wonderful breadth of artwork going from painting, printmaking, drawing, photography, uh, a number of works ranging from young students all the way up to high school students. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. I, I really enjoyed uh, all the different styles and all the techniques that I saw uh, and all the wonderful creativity from uh, these young people. Uh, IMAC is a wonderful venue. Uh, I've really enjoyed myself here uh, and the opportunities it gives to these young artists and to, uh, to the community. Uh, so thank you. I hope you all enjoy my selections. Uh, and that you have a good time at the exhibit. Uh, come out and see it. Uh, really, really uh, been appreciative of this experience. Thank you. So we're talking today about the uh, category of grade school and painting. And my award winners are first through fourth. We have the fourth being the honorable mention. We'll talk about those in order, uh, uh, descending order. Um, my fourth place uh, that I selected, they were among a a mix of others that were in that project, uh, several that were in this style. The reason I picked this one in particular was it was really loose and really creative and really fresh. Usually when students work in a category like this where they're uh, doing a similar project as other students, it's hard to kind of separate yourself and, and look different. And this one felt really uh, exuberant and, and fun and uh, creative. So it didn't have as many of the grids in it. It was kind of looser and open more chances were being taken with color. Uh, and I really like that about this piece. It's obviously a younger student. Uh, and, you know, to clarify with this whole category, it's always difficult to grade uh, grade school students. You want all of them to win awards. Um, but these are the ones that kind of stuck out as the most creative, uh, this one in particular in that project. Our third place in this category uh, really took it a little bit step further. I talked about in the fourth place how it was a project-based uh, project. This very much felt different than that. It felt like a unique, creatively chosen project by the student uh, where they were drawing from imagination, but also somewhat from observation. Uh, a field of grass blowing. You can almost feel the wind blowing through the grass. Uh, the clouds stacked over the rainbow like it's uh, after a, a storm or a rain shower. The textures and the application of the paint is really interesting as well. I felt like this is definitely something um, more than I would typically see out of a grade school project. So I really enjoyed this piece a lot. Uh, with our second place, um, it's a little different than that, but also, you know, kind of an imaginative scene, but also based in reality. You've got the, the mountain scene. One of the things I really liked a lot here was the play of color from the uh, sunset or um, uh, dusk bouncing off of the mountains and then the kind of dotted starry sky. I felt like the students really paid a lot of attention to detail there that uh, is above and beyond what uh, typically you would see. With the first place award winner, I, I really felt like it is way, way, way uh, more advanced than, than um, the, most of the work that I'd seen in the category, which is why I selected it for first place. This is what we would call a painterly painting. Um, this student obviously seems to have a confidence and a knowledge of what they're doing that, that we don't typically see in grade school. Um, brush strokes and palette knife marks and uh, this kind of loose, fresh, painterly approach that you would typically see with older students, uh, even somewhat going up into to a college range. Um, the beautiful color playing off of the, the lake here and the sun, um, the loose marks in the water. You would almost even say it has a kind of a Bob Ross feel to it. Okay, for this category, we're talking about uh, two-dimensional drawing, which includes a lot of dry and wet media and drawing application for grade school. Um, we have a first through fourth uh, selection again. Uh, the uh, fourth place one, I really like the active pencil marks in this and this color pencil. Uh, I thought it was really interesting how they applied color to one side, which is what you would see with light, how it hits a, a surface of a mountain or a tree. So I really like that light there. Uh, and that activity of mark making out that it was really nice and the balance of shapes as well. With third place, it's a really unassuming drawing. It doesn't have as much power as color, but I really liked how it felt like the artist worked from life here. 
I'm meaning not drawing from a photograph or drawing from memory. It feels like something that's sitting in their home or sitting on a table in a classroom that they were drawing. I like how it almost feels like the leaves are moving and growing. Um, again, very unassuming, but I, I love the delicateness of the, the mark making and the, the, the nature uh, that we're seeing there. With second place, this is really, really a, a, a difficult attempt for a grade school. Uh, portraits are name, uh, namely one of the more difficult things that artists have to deal with, um, especially for someone of a young age. So I really like this portrait that it's not looking straight ahead. It feels very organic, you know, meaning that it looks kind of uh, loose and natural like a portrait would. But in particular, I was talking about the, the look or the glance. I love how the eyes are moving up and away in the picture and not looking straight forward. Um, the hair, you know, making every stroke in the hair and all those different lines. I feel like the student went above and beyond what um, was probably required of them or they were thinking about at the time. First place is a, a really simple image, uh, but really beautiful. I love alcohol marker drawings. I love how the colors are blending in between each of the rows. And you can tell this student really cared a lot about what they were working with. A lot of craft, a lot of detail. All the edges are really well made and, and uh, articulated. So I really thought that was a beautiful, well-crafted image. Okay, in the 2D miscellaneous category for grade school, we only had two entries. Um, so I had to select between those two for first and second place. Um, the second place winner, I really loved a few, few details here. Um, in another category, I talked about the looseness of mark making. Uh, kind of being a painterly painting. I love the loose application of the paint. In some cases, it looks like even some finger painting going on in there. Uh, I really love that in the white in this foreground and how the black sets back and it really creates a sense of depth and space, uh, which leads me to talking about space, the beautiful kind of almost aurora borealis going on, the light in the sky and the shooting stars. Uh, and something you probably won't be able to see on the video, but something I really liked is bits of glitter, almost like space dust floating through the sky. I thought that was a really nice uh, uh, touch to finish that painting off. With the first place, again, it was hard to choose between the two. I really enjoyed, again, the looseness of paint that was happening, but I liked it um, for what it did with symmetry. You have this line down the middle, the bilateral symmetry happening um, left and right. Uh, I thought that was an interesting take on it something that's not usually done. So I really like the, the purple uh, circle in the background emanating this light coming out from that, almost like a polar vortex. Um, and then the drawing on top. So because this is a miscellaneous category, we're looking at more than just the paint. So there's paint, there's drawing, it feels like there's some cut pieces there. Uh, really interesting application of different medias. And then like I said, the symmetry I thought was really good as well. For this category, we're talking about uh, middle school uh, drawing. And again, we've got four award winners here. We've got a fourth place honorary mention to first place. Um, with the fourth place, uh, it stood out to me uh, different because of the kind of the project-based things I was seeing with this category. You know, we would see a lot of um, similar things from similar students uh, doing a project in a class. This one felt more independent. It felt more like the the student was doing something from their own creativity, kind of their own imagination. Uh, and again, I really like, we've seen this in other categories, but still very interesting, the application of the white dots kind of creating some energy, almost like a Van Gogh starry night, where you see this motion and wind, almost like a feel like the snowstorm and the cold that's happening there. So I really like the kind of movement, energy, and motion happening with that one. Third place, you kind of see more of a project base where a student will work with a photograph. Uh, they split it down the middle. So we're not judging the photographic part here. We're judging the student's ability to recreate that photograph faithfully. Um, so this student did a really good job. If you look at this, uh, you almost don't see the seam between the two. The student's done a really good job building up value around the edge where you see the shadow under the chin, uh, around the edge of the face, and then lining up the, the uh, spots of the nose, the lines of the nose and the eyes. Uh, really good job of creating those values, creating that depth, and making that seamless approach. With second place, I really love the patterning here. Uh, all the repetition of this background shape uh, and the lines in between that creating kind of a variation of value. But then switching it up from these kind of vertical repetitious patterns to the dot patterns you see in the back of the ray, uh, and then these big open black and white spaces balancing that out. I really felt like there was a lot of energy and a lot of visual interest there. 
I also like the cultural uh, learning that the student's doing here. This, this very much feels like a, a native Inuit or Eskimo type of uh, artwork that you would see in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm assuming there's a little bit of that learning happening there. I think it's a really beautiful approach. The first place winner, I really enjoy this for a number of reasons. I have a background in uh, illustration. I worked a lot in kind of uh, graphic novels, comic books, that kind of thing when I was young. Uh, and I always loved cross hatching and stippling. So if you could really see the inside of this, and once you come to the exhibit, you'll probably see this up close. All the hatching, the little lines that the artist is doing there with, a, it looks like a ballpoint pen or a, a gel pen uh, to create the volume and the folds of the skin from the bulldog, I think is really neat. Uh, and then the, the choice of bringing that little spot color in, the red and yellow around the edge, really highlighting that and bringing that out. Uh, I really felt like there was a lot of technical detail and craft there that I didn't see in some of the other work. Uh, so again, that was my first choice. Okay, for this category, we're talking about 2D miscellaneous in the middle school category. Uh, we had several to choose from here, so it was a lot more difficult to make the choice. Um, starting with our two uh, honorary mentions, we have uh, this piece, which is again, kind of like another category we talked about, reflective of kind of a cultural study. You have the, the killer whale drawn in the black and white. But what I really liked about this was the inversion of what usually happens. Most of the time people would fill in the color in the main object, but we've got this beautiful vibrant color all happening around the black and white objects, which makes it actually stand out more. So I really love that approach. Uh, with um, our other fourth place award winner, I love the positive and negative happening here. Uh, the student working in uh, these kind of loose brush strokes and painterly approaches, almost like a Zen tangle uh, kind of thing, uh, where you've got a lot of different things happening with pen and ink and, and uh, watercolor, and then cutting out a shape from that form and then moving it on the other side. So you have a kind of a balance of the positive and negative. Uh, I really like the play of that outside shape, the, uh, the small animal uh, against that, that negative side over here. With our third place, it really felt like a modernist painting, uh, something you would see in the early 1900s. It just really struck me as being uh, out of time, so to speak. It didn't feel like something you would see a student make today. So it really, it felt classic. It felt really interesting to me. Uh, namely, the geometric shapes balancing on each other, but the approach of being able to do this smooth shading around each of the forms makes them stand out, makes them have uh, kind of a three-dimensional quality. That with the color balancing between orange and blue and the orange and green really give it a really nice sense of space. So I really enjoyed that one for that reason. Uh, with second place, we have a, a stark black and white, which is typically hard to do. Um, trying to create fine lines in this black and white format. Uh, this in particular is a, a linoleum print or a block print. Uh, so what you're seeing is a student having to carve away the white, which is a really difficult crafting process. Uh, so I really love the mark making here and the balance of black and white, and then the kind of radial symmetry happening. So any line that you go through, you're seeing some sense of symmetry between these two forms, which is really beautiful. And with our first place, we have a, uh, another split uh, photographic piece, which you've seen in other categories. Really nice to see that line really blending very well between reality or the photograph and then what the student's drawn. In some cases, you can't even tell. The, the balance of black and white in the eye, the details in the lips, all really beautiful and really technically um, well done, well crafted. With our uh, grand champion or our um, uh, best of show, it was a really tough choice. I had all these beautiful pieces to choose from, uh, but I chose this one over here. Uh, as our best of show for uh, middle school overall. This is all categories in middle school. And one of the things I loved about this, I do a lot of drawing from life, especially when I'm sitting at maybe a coffee shop or I'm uh, sitting out somewhere at the doctor's office. I can tell that the student has really put in a lot of time and effort into observing what they're drawing. And it's not just something they're doing as a project. This is something where a student really loves drawing as a process. You can see all the details of this shop. There's a table with it looks like a croissant and a cup of coffee, and then all the things happening in the background, all the lights and all the tables and all the, the different things you see in the, the kind of cafe scene. I think it's just really a beautiful, beautiful image and very, very well done. So that was my uh, best to show for the middle school uh, grade group. 
All right, so now we have the middle school painting category, which I felt like had the most depth of any category in the entire show. Uh, there was so many works in this category and it made it really difficult to choose from. Out of the multiple hours I took to judge, this probably took a good third of my judging. Um, so it was really, really, really competitive and, and, and difficult to, to judge. My multiple fourth place awards, honorary mentions, I have three of which uh, to choose from. Uh, this one here, it's kind of a Jackson Pollock action painting kind of uh, a style. Uh, the students all did a project together, it looks like, where they all learned to do this, but this one stood out among all of those uh, to me for a, num a number of reasons. The warm and cool colors, so the red and the blue, and the red and the violet, and the violet and the blue, they all play well together as an analogous color palette. Uh, those uh, analogous color palettes are really familiar with each other, so violet has blue in it, and violet also has red in it, so those are all kind of a family DNA of colors. So the colors bounce well off of each other, they play well with each other. And then the way the student chose to play with positive and negative space. So the amount of positive marks versus negative, I felt like was a really nice balance. Beautiful little painting. Um, this one, really interesting to me because of the content. Uh, the painting is fairly simplistic in terms of the color, uh, but I do love this color gradient, uh, both in the ground and the sky. But I love the symmetry. So if you drew that line down the middle, what's happening on each side is kind of balanced off of each other. But conceptually, I felt like it was compelling. The idea that the tree roots are uprooted, the trees are flying in the air, and you have this really strange human form, uh, seemingly without feet, without a head, uh, really kind of conceptually compelling. I wanna know more to the story. I wanna know what was going on. Uh, which is really not something you see a lot with young artists. You don't see them working with storytelling. You don't see them working with uh, these ideas of um, kind of dealing with uh, maybe emotional ideas or events that has happened in their lives. So I really like that. I would like to know more of the story personally. And I've got my own ideas, which I think is what happens uh, with good art. It tells a story and it makes a viewer want to know more. So I really thought that was nice. Uh, with our th uh, other fourth place winner, um, not a typical color palette you see with a landscape. You can see this mountain range, uh, mountain pass uh, with a morning sun coming up. Uh, so you've got the bits of light bouncing around, but the colors are very subdued and muted. So you don't usually see that as a choice. You know, usually people pick really bright, vivid colors. So I really like the calmness of this early morning sun uh, uh, setting uh, for this landscape. I thought it was really beautiful. With third place, this is a really interesting thing, uh, how the student has balanced these really harsh geometric shapes uh, against really beautiful painterly uh, strokes of color. I like the pink and the purple and the yellow balancing each other as a color palette uh, and the delicate line work and even little attentions to detail like little, little insects and things flying around in the scene. It's, it's kind of more of an abstract landscape, but I find it really compelling. With second place, I really love the radial symmetry here, which radial symmetry, you're moving across diagonal lines and vertical lines. Any way that you cut this, it's gonna be the same. Uh, but what stood out to me here was how beautifully well-made it was in terms of craft, how straight these lines are, how, how difficult that is to paint, especially at this grade level. This is a very striking, very high contrast image that I felt like just really needed or deserved to have an award. It's a very beautiful piece. And with the first place winner here, very, very um, uh, much right off the bat when I saw this piece, I thought of Picasso and his blue period. This reminds me of the Picasso uh, guitarist who is singing a song, playing a guitar, and it's all blue color palettes just like this. And the emotion of the, the portrait that you see matches the color. Color uh, can tell a lot about the emotional uh, concept with the work. And so with your blues here, you kind of have more of a down, uh, somber kind of emotional state, which I think is tied well with the expression of the portrait. Uh, so for me, this one conceptually does a great job, but also in terms of craft does a great job, and it ties to kind of historical artistic practice as well. So I really love this for our first place winner. Okay, so for our uh, last category in middle school, uh, we're looking at three-dimensional artworks, uh, and we've got a, a number of really interesting things here to look at. Uh, we've got a, a plaster uh, figure here, which is my honorary uh, mention. Uh, this is a beautiful animal form, you know, bright color contrast between blue and orange. Uh, really cute, really, uh, really fun. 
I thought that was a great honorable mention. Uh, with third place, uh, I thought this was you know, a lot more complicated, really interesting to see uh, happening with three-dimensional work for students. Uh, this beautiful little necklace. Uh, I really enjoyed, uh, I've been talking about this a lot, but the, the symmetry uh, of the form. Really love that beautiful play back and forth and the colors, uh, the red-green uh, contrast and the, the orange and green and how they play well off of each other. I thought that was a beautiful little necklace. With our second place, uh, we had another plaster form. Uh, I thought this, you know, really had a lot more interesting things going on here. Uh, all the different color patterns uh, playing off of the, the scales or the, um, the outside of the seahorse, uh, the color from the nose to the back, and then the curve of the tail. A lot of details here, really pretty, uh, colorful uh, piece. And then our first place, I thought was really, really well made overall. Uh, everything here seems to be handmade between the hair, uh, the buttons on the eyes, the painting on the face, um, the sweater that's um, on the body, the pants. It seems like everything here is really well handmade. And I just thought overall just a really beautiful attention to detail, a really beautiful piece. Okay, in this category, we're moving on to high school uh, and we're looking at uh, uh, 3D mixed media. Uh, my third place here is a, a felted bee. You can kind of see that as I turn the form. I just felt like it was just a, a super cute little form, uh, but very, very well made. From a craft perspective, you know, felting is, is a really difficult process, and so I really love the attention to detail, how smooth the edges are, uh, how good the body shape is of the bee. Just a really beautiful little piece. Uh, with our second place, a really, really unique mixed media piece, true mixed media, where the student's working in this picture frame and using uh, an epoxy resin or a glue to do this beadwork, pulling in all these pieces of bead and glass and seashells, uh, I think is a really, truly beautiful, uh, really spirited 3D piece, uh, especially something with good mixed media. I love the idea of looking through this and seeing kind of an ocean setting. Uh, you can look at it in several different ways, like a topographic map, like you're looking down at it, or you're looking through the space into an ocean landscape. Uh, just overall, just a really uh, interesting textured piece. Now over here, we have our first place, but I want to talk about the fourth place first. The reason I didn't start with that is it's kind of confined in this box. With the fourth place piece, we had several rings to choose from. I really thought this ring uh, was, it was quite beautiful. You can see that it was handcrafted. Uh, the students made this from scratch. The reason I chose it is it, it had less filing marks and was much more well crafted and polished. I think the surface of the metal uh, was uh, well treated. And I loved how the form moves inside and out in that positive negative way. It creates a nice beautiful rhythm. Uh, really nice piece. That was my honorable mention fourth place. Uh, but that's next to our first place, which is this uh, beautiful, beautiful stone setting here. Uh, the students had to make this bezel cup here. Everything's hand fabricated, everything down to um, the stone being set inside of this ring that's been hand soldered, hand uh, formed around an anvil with hammer. Uh, so beautiful, beautiful execution, really difficult craft. Uh, and I think that is just an absolutely stunning piece for our first place. For this category, we're looking at uh, high school sculpture. Uh, sculpture is something we're looking at uh, to try to talk about three-dimensional form, where we would look at all the way around the, the object. Uh, our fourth place honorable mention is a, a ceramic vessel, a beautiful glaze on it. It's got this uh, really nice drip, this uh, teal dripping into the, the tan uh, and yellow ochre color. I thought that was just a really beautiful surface treatment and glaze in a really well-handled three-dimensional form uh, in ceramic. Then for third place, we have this foam sculpture. The reason I chose that is it's really beautiful, almost figurative work. You can kind of see the uh, indication of maybe a, a head and body, uh, but at the same time, it's also abstract. I really thought this was just a beautiful handling overall, really well molded and sanded down, really great surface treatment and a good rhythm uh, moving throughout the piece. So beautiful third place uh, piece there. With second place, I just love this as a set. The beautiful repetition, so you have the repetition of the similar form over and over, the little, little kitten. Uh, but what you have is a really nice variety of handling of the surface between uh, the dot pattern here that you see uh, going on, and this is kind of more of a um, bloom, watercolor bloom, 
and uh, different textures and colors you see throughout all, all four of them, but they also set well together. So the color you see in this form plays off of this form and the color from here to here and then the blue back to here. So as a set, they work really well together. Beautiful rhythm and variety happening. Nice little set. And for our first place, I really love this. It has such a great table presence to it. Uh, beautiful, well-sculpted form. So when I think of sculpture, I think about all the handwork that went into creating this top of this, uh, this mushroom house. Uh, and then all the color and texture on the bottom. Very, very beautiful handmade piece. And I really see a lot of effort into the actual sculpting and modeling process happening here in the clay. Okay, with this category, we're looking at ceramics uh, from the high school grade level. Uh, a lot of beautiful work to choose from. We had bowls and plates and cups and tea sets and box forms, all kinds of things to look at. Uh, so it was, a, it was another tight category, a difficult category. Uh, but I think I've got some that are really beautiful to talk about here. Uh, for an honorable mention, I had this piece, which is just a lidded form, lidded clay form built out of slabs. I thought this was really neat because it's a really difficult process to create a lidded form that will hold together like this. Uh, and then the attachment of the, the sun inside of here I thought was a nice thing. So when you remove the lid, you see that form inside. Uh, just a beautiful little play of the inside out, the three-dimensional quality of the clay. Uh, really neat form. Another honorable mention that I have here uh, is a coil form. Uh, coils are uh, little, uh, little long tendrils of clay that you put together. Uh, and this is actually put together with little balls of clay. Uh, so one after another, they've been layered in here. Just a beautiful, beautiful handmade piece and great glaze covering. I love the texture on it. I thought it was a really nice uh, honorable mention as well. With third place, they've got a great little tea set. You know, each little piece is made individually. Uh, you've got some uh, hand carving into the side here. Um, beautiful glaze, inside out treatments. So you've got this nice blue showing in the middle uh, inside of the cup and then nice little lid for the teapot, and then a serving tray. Beautiful little mark making here, uh, beautiful coloring. One of the reasons I chose this was it's just such a complete set and really well made. With well, second place, these seem a little bit more unassuming. You know, we've just looked at some more complex forms, but my second and first place winners, even though they're unassuming and simple, they're very, very, very well made, thin bowls. One of the things when I talk about ceramics is I talk about the thinness of the walls and the uh, the handmade quality of how the, the artist has felt that with throwing rings and created that, uh, that lightweight uh, bowl form. Very well done, love the throwing rings, thin walls, and then the beautiful color contrast between the, uh, the earthenware clay and then the green glaze form. First place seems seemingly the most simple form, uh, but I think it is absolutely stunning. The, the inside out treatment that I talked about again, this bright red interior, to the darker, more maroon outside, and just how perfectly uh, modeled the walls are. No throwing rings really to be seen, really thin walls in a perfectly balanced cup. Uh, this would be a perfect, perfect example uh, of an entry-level wheel throwing project. So beautiful for first place. Okay, so now we have the high school category for drawing. Uh, again, a lot of choices here. You know, the high school categories, there are a lot more student entries, so it makes it harder to choose from. Uh, I try to choose things that are a little bit different. You know, I don't always select the same, same kind of styles throughout. So uh, my thought process here was, A, I'm looking for things that are drawn from observation and or are very, very creatively unique. Uh, so this last piece, it almost snuck by me. This is my fourth place honorable mention. I almost didn't see it. It's such a tiny little piece compared to everything else, but it's such a beautiful little form and it's got this great technique of stippling thousands of little dots. This student took so much time and so much care shading all these little mushroom caps uh, with all those beautiful little dots. Unassuming and small yet very mighty. A beautiful little piece. I, I love that work. For third place, I got an observational drawing of a cat sitting on a table. Uh, just a beautiful setting that you would see, you know, most houses you'd see this kind of form. Uh, you've got the uh, vase with flowers. Uh, the table and the window, that's where all cats like to, to spend their time. But I just thought it was beautiful, the cat looking at the camera, the dark space behind the cat and the cat being lighter in value, really separating those forms, that light and dark balance, positive and negative. And then the, the perspective lines with the blinds moving you back in space. Great little observational drawing. Love uh, the way that that was set up. 
Second place is a little bit divergent. Usually I pick things that are a little bit more uh, observational in nature or black and white balance, kind of traditional. Uh, but I felt like this was such a compelling piece, even though it's kind of cartoony, it really demanded a lot of uh, respect and admiration. I think there's a lot of great things happening here. Uh, the beautiful play of the cut lines through the space, so it's separating out the images, uh, the rabbit, the fox, and the possum kind of breaking apart. But then you can see the background showing through, and I thought that was really beautiful to play the textures against each other, the blues and the oranges. Again, the orange and blue here and all the different textures. There's little hearts back here behind this and circular forms. This has so much going on and it just really demanded my attention. Uh, so that was a really easy choice, I think, for second place. Although first and second were really close for me. Uh, with first place, it's a really scary image, really dark, really, uh, um, really foreboding. It's got that, that typical thing you see with drama, the um, contrast of ideas black and white contrast in, in terms of uh, the art material and the um, design elements, but also sad and happy. Clowns are happy, uh, yet this clown is crying, so you get that contrast of ideas along with the contrast of the, the value going on. Namely, why I chose this outside of that, though, is the, the rendering. So the white edges on things and then blending in, uh, drawing light on dark this way, and then the, that kind of mottled form it's just a really beautiful classical approach to drawing that I thought just really deserved that first place award. So we have um, an addition here to the last category we talked about. We missed a couple of pieces that weren't on the board. I wanted to talk about them as uh, our honorable mentions. They really deserve to, to be mentioned here. Um, these two in particular I, I thought were striking for a number of reasons. Uh, with this piece, uh, I really enjoyed, again, the cross-hatching and stippling that you see uh, that I've talked about in some other pieces, uh, namely the value and direction change of each of these lines here inside of the form. Uh, I think it does a really great job of capturing the likeness of the, the two people here, uh, their likeness, their, their emotion, and their, uh, the kind of joyfulness of these two figures, I think is really good. With this, it's kind of a Zentangle piece, which is when you, you know, have a bunch of patterns that happen over and over and through a, uh, throughout a composition. I really love the change of uh, different patterns from the ear to the body to the sides of the elephant and the head. I thought it was just a really beautiful attention to detail, really small pen work. Uh, two really beautiful pieces that we just really needed to talk about uh, and de deserve some kind of award here. Okay, for this category we have uh, high school again, grade level and we're looking at 2D miscellaneous. Uh, with 2D miscellaneous, you've got a lot of different things happening. We had a lot of photography, uh, some mixed media pieces, so like cut paper, painting. Um, uh, so it was really a tough category, things that are really hard to judge against each other. I tried to do the best I could, but I really felt like all these deserved uh, the awards that they got. Uh, with my honorable mention here, uh, one of the honorable mentions, uh, we have this kind of crystal mosaic uh, painting, which is really beautiful. I love the repetition of these triangles and your different values and analogous colors in the background, the pink and the orange and the red. Uh, and the reason I chose this among the others that are similar to it, mainly is the difference between the cool and the warm colors. So that makes the subject matter, this butterfly, stand out and pop off of the background, where some of the other forms might have been a little bit too similar in color. I felt like this one really did a good job of contrasting color. Uh, that along with some of the interesting forms too, like this organic form uh, balanced against the more rectilinear forms. Uh, really interesting piece. In third place, I, I really like this for photography because it had a little bit more of a creative look to it. Uh, some of the photography I chose is more technique based. Uh, this one I felt like it had technique and concept going on, so I really liked how the eye was popping through the negative space between the two cards and this kind of diagonal uh, action line happening with the composition really interesting in terms of the emotion and, and what we're seeing there. Uh, with third place, I love the light here on this flower. I had several flower forms to choose from that students had worked with, but I really enjoyed this one personally. And any of them you could split hairs. Uh, you know, some people might have liked another flower or a, a different one. Uh, I chose this one because I really like the backlighting happening. So the light coming from the other side of the flower and through, we see it in a different way that we don't normally see it. Uh, we might be used to seeing the bright pink color of a rose uh, or the normal kind of lighting setting uh, outside. So this lighting kind of changes a little bit, makes us see the form in a different way. 
we see the edges more. We see the, the lighting happening in the negative spaces where you wouldn't normally see that. Uh, it almost feels like it's on fire to a certain extent. It has a glow to it that I think is really uh, gorgeous. With the second place uh, piece here, another photograph, I thought the texture was really beautiful on this piece. Uh, the texture throughout happening uh, both inside of the forms and the subjects, uh, overlapping some, behind some. I really love that as an overall pattern, kind of the cracked mud that you see. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful pattern happening in nature. But on top of that is the, the symmetry in the composition. The circle being kind of high center and then between uh, the edges perfectly placed. I thought really, really good attention to detail with the, uh, the composition there. Uh, with first place, it, it seems a little bit more unassuming. Um, it's a kind of a straightforward portrait, but I think there's a lot more depth to this than what you might see initially. The lining coming from the upper left and across the, the head kind of creates that Rembrandt three-quarter lighting, uh, almost creating what we call loop lighting. Loop lighting is when you get the shadow from the nose coming across with the shadow of the cheek. It really creates a three-dimensional look of the uh, human portrait. You usually want to look for this for fine art photography and uh, portraiture. I thought really, really good use of that lighting. Uh, on top of that, I think the eyes looking up with the light being positioned up makes it kind of spiritual or otherworldly, kind of looking up to a bright light in the sky. You could interpret that a lot of different ways. Uh, so I really felt like this had a lot of rich depth to it and a really beautiful craft with the light uh, and the technique of the, the photo editing. For this category, we're talking about painting in the high school level. Uh, wonderful paintings. I was so pleasantly surprised. These are uh, uh, all beautiful in their own way. We have landscapes and portraits and, and animal painting. I mean, they're just a great range of things to choose from. Uh, very difficult, again, to choose. Um, but starting with our Arnold mentions, which I think could have won in other categories too, depending on the competition. Uh, this is a beautiful still life painting uh, in watercolor. Really, really great attention to detail. The shadows under the forms, uh, the shadows as they're stacked in, the, in this volume, it looks like a, a cylinder. Um, beautiful still life, beautiful color palette. Uh, the reds and the blues and the yellows all popping off each other. Just really well drawn. I think this is a really, really good uh, example of drawing and painting. Another honorable mention, uh, an unassuming little painting, but really beautiful composition. I love the organization of the pencils in diagonal lines, which creates a visual rhythm moving you up and down uh, through that composition. Uh, really good painting application as well. Uh, very well rendered, a beautiful little piece. For our third place, uh, we have here a, a really interesting portrait. Uh, traditionally with kind of a, a Byzantine uh, style of painting where you kind of have these halos around portraits, you would see these kind of really beautiful, perfect circles. But I like this because this uh, person chose to put points around the light, which makes it feel uh, very unique and very different, almost like sun emanating from uh, around that kind of halo form around the figure. Uh, and then that kind of balance against the light in the eyes as well. I think makes this a very um, otherworldly kind of image. Uh, somebody looking up to the sky again, like we looked at in the photo category, uh, where you're kind of looking up at the light and lights emanating out of the figure. Really beautiful handled piece. And also the craft of it, the painting strokes are really interesting. You know, there's a looseness to the painting strokes, but it's also well rendered as well. You can see each of the fingers kind of pulled together there, uh, almost in prayer, which I think is really interesting. Uh, really, really great third place piece. Uh, in second place, I have this uh, landscape, really, really large format piece. It demands attention. Uh, it was really interesting because I kept fighting myself. Uh, I kept wanting to look at this one over and over again because it's such a large, large format, which is an interesting thing with painting. You can get larger really quick. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about it, other than the scale, uh, was the kind of impressionistic mark making. Impressionism is when you're looking at kind of a, a loose painterly approach, but it's kind of directional and immediate and loose. Uh, so they're, they're kind of almost Van Gogh-like, that, that kind of, uh, that style and period. So I really love that kind of loose brush mark and uh, mark making. And the transition all the way down from the color wheel, red to red, orange, orange, yellow, yellow, green to green, it kind of follows the rainbow. And that, what's interesting about that is you don't see it at first. Usually when you see kind of rainbow colored pieces, they stand out and they're kind of obvious, but this is unassuming and you don't really notice that at first. And I think that's a really nice quiet voice. 
uh, beautiful line work for the trees, the aspen trees, uh, and the wildlife and the, uh, the uh, tree leaves falling around. It's got a really nice energy to it. I love that for second place. With first place, it doesn't have the energy we just looked at the other one, but you know, this cat doesn't have a lot of energy. It's kind of a lazy cat laying down. I really love that kind of like color choice with that theme. Uh, so the lazy cat tied with the cool blues, it feels really calm and relaxing. Um, but there's much more to it than that that I really like. I love all of the, the texture work for the pattern of the cat, but the eyes are really what's beautiful in the nose where the, the artist has gone through and done these really small brush strokes and marks with uh, either a pen or a brush uh, and brought all that attention to that, that face of the cat. Really beautiful handled and I like the play of the tight detail against the loose watercolor, really nice contrast. And for our best of show, uh, it, it just, it, I couldn't take my eyes off it. It was such a great piece. It's so, so well made. Uh, I think this person should be very proud of what they've done. Um, it has everything that I would teach my students at a college level to do. You have your soft rendering of the background, your, your depth of field, if you're talking about photography or film, the depth of field in the background, um, your uh, atmospheric perspective that I talk about where things are getting more blue or less rendered in the background, and then your foreground or your subject matter are so in focus and so uh, clarified. The shadow work, the details around the mouth and eyes and nostril, uh, are so well made and so well rendered uh, inside of the hair, the texture that you get in there with the brush strokes. And then on top of that, all the other things that are happening, the color contrast between the blue and the orange, uh, the green and the blue being similar colors and the orange contrasting, the repetition of that shape happening around the form, and then the expression. It's just a wonderfully made piece, a very, very amazing piece. Uh, I could do nothing less than give it best of show.